Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the unboxing and first few cooking items in my new Kasori air fryer. If you've been thinking about buying one for yourself, there is a link to the one that I purchased below this video in the description box. Now let's have a look at what I bought and what I did with it. So here is my new Kasori air fryer. I bought the premium 5.5 litre, which is large enough to cook for at least two people and three not very hungry ones. It has 11 preset settings and an LED touch screen and basically does all the work for you. There's lots of pictures on the side of the box of all the lovely things that you can cook should you feel so inclined, including desserts. I was quite impressed by the cinnamon buns. And uh, it has a shake reminder to let you know when the items in the basket need shaking and a keep warm function so that if you don't happen to uh, stay in the room with it, your food won't be cold when you come back. It comes in several colours, I believe. I think you can get white, red or black on Amazon. I bought the white one. Air frying produces food with up to 85% less fat than deep frying. You use hardly any fat at all. Maybe a little spray oil here or there for something that you want to crisp up. And it does actually come with a free cookbook that has 100 recipes as well. Not that I've actually cooked anything out of there yet. So it says here you can fit a whole five pound chicken into it. I haven't tried that yet either, but perhaps I'll do that in a later video. So I went ahead and set the camera up on the tripod so that I could unbox it. Inside the box there is a little package and in there you've got your, your little recipe book and your instruction manual. You've also got um, a warranty leaflet and a quick reference guide. All of those are in this little pouch. And I was impressed with the presentation of that. I thought it was nice that it came in the little cardboard sleeve and that everything was, was, uh, was there for you. Quite impressed with that. So then I went ahead and uh, took everything out of the box, got rid of the packaging and set up my new air fryer, ready to have a play. On the front of the air fryer there is a sticker to warn you that there is packaging inside and it also is between the two baskets. I thought it was good that they warned you of that otherwise I probably would have just gone ahead and cooked that packaging and melted it. And there is a, a message on the top to tell you that there's a caution on the back and what that caution is is to warn you that there's a vent on the back and that you need to make sure that you move your air fryer away from any walls. You know, you can't cook with it tucked away in a corner. Air needs to circulate around the entire air fryer for safety. Otherwise, the um, automatic cutoff will just cut off. So having familiarised myself with that, I peeled off those stickers. There were four or five stickers holding the door closed for transit as well. So I peeled off all of those, took the sticker off the front, took the sticker off the top and gradually managed to work my way through getting all the packaging out. the same roads every day we both get there our own way this land an apple tree how different do souls can be but we both grow from the same sorrow if we both know we'll be together can be like a tree in the wind same old roots but i can bend turning to understand and sway together now it's almost like a dance next it was time to start pressing buttons so 
that centre button is the on and once that comes on the display lights up and you can see all the preset buttons. It may be difficult for you to make them out on the screen but there's pictures of chicken drumsticks and fish and shrimp and various other things. So there's lots of preset functions that you can just pop things in and, and let it rock and roll and do its own thing. Or you can make it up as you go along or if you're following a recipe and it tells you a temperature then there is a button that increases and decreases the temperature and the time. So you press it once and that will help you reset the temperature, you press it again and that will be to reset the time. And by now I was wanting to get started making my first recipe. I decided I would make a pita bread pizza. These are things that I've seen other people make but I have never tried one before and I thought it would be a simple thing to get started with. So you take one pita bread of your choice and then I squeezed on some tomato puree and spread that around until it was evenly coated. We make love better if we both know we'll be together forever we can be like the trees in the I then thought I would take the opportunity to use these clever cutter scissors which I actually picked up at a car boot sale and they are for people who are maybe not so dexterous with a knife. I'm fine with a knife but I thought I, I, I like a novelty thing in my kitchen so I thought I'd give these a go. They're okay but they, they weren't exactly maybe as sharp as I'd like. I think I'd have been quicker with a knife but I persevered. So you can see me chopping up a spring onion for the top of my pizza to begin with. And after my spring onion, I moved on to mushrooms and then some sliced ham. I layered all of my items onto my pita bread pizza, making it as pretty as I could be bothered at the time. Left the big city for the simple country life. Found myself a woman that it took for me to be my way. I was working on the And then topped it with a small quantity of grated mozzarella. I think I used about 20 grams. It possibly could have done with a little bit more, but I'm calorie counting. If you're not, you can go ahead and slap a load on. Maybe I just can't. I ain't no up and kind of leaving me. She kissed me one time and she took my heart. Baby, you can love me, you can leave me. I'm a hungry dog star. Yeah, I'm a honky tonk star. Well, working three jobs, living out of a car. I then gave it a press down with my hand just to kind of make it feel like everything wasn't going to fall off, and popped it into the basket of the air fryer. Yeah, I'm a honky tonk star. And then rather than use a preset function, I decided I would try it at 195 for 10 minutes. So I set those buttons to do that and then pressed the play button. Literally, literally it's a play button and off it goes. When the time was up, it beeped to let me know it had finished cooking and there was my perfectly cooked pita bread pizza. Uh, served that with some salad leaves and I think a little bit of mayonnaise and it was absolutely delicious. I was really really pleased that my first attempt had gone so well. I know it was only simple but it was very very straightforward and really easy to do. Well working three jobs living out of the car. Mama never told me I could get this car. So flushed with my success of my pita bread pizza the next day I thought I would try to make a banana oat cookie. Um, I thought this was ideal for someone on diet because you could just make one cookie at a time and essentially you start with 30 grams of fast cooked porridge oats. I believe you have to have the quick cook kind. I think if you've got the, the slow ones then I don't think you'll end up with a nice cookie. These are uh, two bananas that have been in the freezer so they're all, they were already overripe before I froze them and they're already very very mushy which means they mashed up really really simply. So you just mash your two bananas with a fork until they are gloop and then you add your oats to your gloop and stir it around to make a thicker gloop.
You can, if you wish, cook that as it is, just the two ingredients, but I decided to add a few chocolate chips. So I weighed out a tiny quantity and worked out my calories for them. I can't off the top of my head remember what the calories were, but I worked out a teeny tiny quantity and added that in to my uh, banana and oat cookie mixture. I then took a small piece of greaseproof baking paper and lined the bottom of the air fryer. On reflection it needed to be smaller because the edges of this fluttered up and almost caught during the cooking process so a smaller piece would have been fine, just big enough for the cookie to sit on. And then I emptied out my, my oat banana mixture and spread it into a kind of a cookie shape. And then I set the temperature to 180 degrees and brought the time down to seven minutes. I really wasn't sure how long it would need, so I thought I'd give it seven minutes just to try out. Came back when the beeping had told me that the program had finished, had a quick look, and it, to be honest, looked a little bit doughy at this point. Gave it a plod, it felt still quite squishy, it wasn't very brown, so I decided I'd pop it back in. This time I gave it a further two minutes, still at 180 degrees. When I came back at the end of the further two minutes, it looked a bit more done. I took it out again, gave it a bit of a poke, bit of a prod, and decided it was definitely cooked enough to eat. And the result was a gooey, almost cakey texture cookie. For my next trick, I decided to try a kind of a Spanish frittata, a kind of a potato omelette kind of idea. So I took a largish potato, peeled it and sliced it as thinly as I could manage and then I put those slices into a small saucepan with some boiling water and put them on to just part boil and soften down a bit. Once those were in the pan, I took a Tesco pork and herb sausage patty, popped it into the air fryer at 160 for eight minutes, and while that was cooking away, got the rest of my ingredients out. So I've got a couple of eggs, a mushroom, a spring onion, and salt, pepper, and mustard powder. I diced my spring onion into tiny bits, and when I'd done that, my potatoes had finished part boiling, so I drained those off. And I took this little foil tray, which I got in Wilkinson's, and layered the potatoes into that just spread them around so there was a nice even layer. And then I set that aside and beat two eggs with um, salt, pepper and a little bit of mustard powder to give it a little bit extra flavour. then sliced my mushroom thinly and layered the mushroom slices on top of the potato slices in the foil tray. By now my little sausage patty was about half cooked so I took it out and diced it very thinly, scattered that into the tray on top of the potato and mushroom. Was it the same night you had trouble with your car? I then took my beaten egg mixture and poured it over the entire lot, trying to make sure that it got spread out nicely, but at this point it became obvious that I did not have enough egg, and so I ended up having to beat another egg up just to add in to make sure everything was thoroughly coated. I then finished by sprinkling my chopped spring onions over the top and topped it with a little bit of cheese, not a great deal again, still calorie counting, so just a little bit of cheese. And then it went into the air fryer and this time I programmed it for 185 degrees and I set it for 14 minutes, but I wasn't sure whether I'd need that much. So I came back at five minutes, had a quick look and thought to myself, yeah, that looks pretty much done. And I simply served it on its own with a little blob of Heinz saucy sauce. 
No salad, no nothing. So the final thing that I cooked that I've added into this video is just some simple roast potatoes. These dishes were really just me getting to grips with what the air fryer could do, what sort of temperatures it cooked at, how I should be using it. And so I haven't done anything very elaborate in this video. It's, it's not what you could call recipes as you've seen, it's just how does this work, what will this do? So you know how to do roast potatoes. You start with peeling, you then parboil, rough them up nicely in the pan. And at that point I sprayed a little bit of spray oil on them and I popped them into the basket of the air fryer. This time I programmed my air fryer to 195 degrees and I started with a 25 minute countdown, came back at 17 minutes to have a look and gave them a nice shake, turned them all over just to make sure that they crisped up on, on all sides. And it did seem like 25 minutes was about right because when I came back after the 17 minutes was up they were beautiful, golden brown, maybe they'd have been brown if I'd put more oil on. Finally, I just thought, finally, I just thought I'd show how easy it is to clean the air fryer basket. You take out the entire drawer and then there is a button that you press that releases the basket. You just wash the basket out simply with ordinary washing up liquid. I'm using a little scrubby brush there to make sure I get both sides. And a little cloth there to wipe around the edges. And then as well as the basket, you can also wash out the little drawer as well. So the basket goes upside down on the draining board to drain. And then I repeat the process with the drawer. It's that simple. Leave it to drain. And then once it's thoroughly dry, pop it back into the air fryer. Job done. Ready for next time. So part of me, I was down and out and nothing seemed to come out. So there we go. Thank you for watching me unbox my air fryer and start trying things out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do remember to click the subscribe button and uh, then you'll see further content from me. Remember to hit the like button if you've liked it. And uh, I'll be back soon with, with something else. Take care. Bye for now.